let's talk about conspiracy theories. Let's do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to need a cigarette to talk about this because this shit bothers me. And uh, everybody's got stuff that bothers them. Everybody's got all sorts of hang-ups and things that they're frightened of. Everybody's got fears. Um, even completely fearless people have got fears. You know, any, anybody that says they don't fear anything, you know, is lying, right? So fear makes you think that there's somebody behind it and that this, this being behind it is all sorts of organized and shit like that. Which uh, is only true in a very minimal sort of way. I don't believe in the Illuminati. I don't believe in the Knights Templar. Um, I don't believe that there's a secret organization or a one-world government, although, to be quite honest, would that really be so bad? You know, we spend an incredible amount of money securing borders and stuff like that. You know, wouldn't, like, a planet that had a, an overall government that was in favor of people and looked towards making sure that everybody had enough food to eat and had somewhere to live and did something productive with their lives or did what they wanted with their lives, that would, that, you know, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Hammocks are good. Get a hammock. So, the real problem is, as I see it, from the grand old age of 47, the distribution of wealth. Okay? So, you might argue that somebody has worked very, very hard. But, and some people do. Some people drive themselves and they innovate. And, but very few people actually innovate. Very few people actually come up with a completely innovative idea that wasn't in some way utilized from an earlier, older idea. Okay? Now, in a fair world, if you invented, say, a new kind of operating system that was based on, um, say, Unix, then shouldn't you pass on some of your earnings to the people that developed Unix that allowed you to build a new operating system? If you invented a new kind of computer, wouldn't you think, hang on, a lot of the design specs and a lot of the things come from an earlier invention? It's the way that wealth is sort of concentrated in so few people that is a real problem. The 1% richest people in the world own half of the wealth. Half of it. I'm not, I haven't got a problem with them being a little bit richer or better off or more comfortable. Or maybe even if they come up with a suitably world-changing idea, never really having to work again. But I've got a super big problem with people hoarding that wealth, passing it on to their children, letting their children wield political and economic power on a scale that's never been seen before on Earth. You know, you could argue that an emperor had all that power, loads of power and wealth and unlimited resources, but they didn't really. You know, they weren't able to control elections in other countries. You know, they, you know, they could invade, but that was a hugely costly undertaking. What I'm saying is, without the necessity of invading, some countries, some oligarchs, some super powerful businessmen are calling the shot on how the rest of us live. You know, I will leave it up to you to come up with your own examples of that, but it is kind of ubiquitous. You know, if you've got enough power through wealth and you can wield that wealth or you can change the GDP of a country by a few percent, the politicians of that country will necessarily have to listen to you. You can threaten to move to another country. You could threaten to lay off your workforce. You know, there's, there's this. People are just using, like, one fairly innocuous invention or one fairly, you know, innocuous thing that they do in order to make the lives of ordinary people increasingly bad. And that's what they're doing. There's no rhyme or reason or plan to it. So forget your Illuminati or your, your Bilderberg conspiracies or all that. Wealthy people are being dicks for the most part. And within the next 20 years, it looks like two-thirds of the world's wealth. So it's exponentially increasing. There's your, there's your, you know, if you've got to have an enemy in your life, that would be your enemy. You know, these are the people that oppose the rest of us living with increased comfort. You know, they're actively standing in the way, even if all they do is put that money, that meaningless fiat currency, in a bank. They then get to tell the bank what to do. You know, they... It pretty much, there's no such thing as trickle-down economics. That's a myth from the 80s, and it's, since in nearly 40 years, there's no evidence for, it, for that to be the case. So I know that there's a lot of, of, of people out there that think that if you own a gigantic amount of money, you should be able to do what you want with it. And that's kind of like freedom. 
but it's what you use that freedom for, that, that sort of power that you can wield, for something good. And generally speaking, wealthy people don't. They might make a load of contributions to charity, but they don't really solve any problems. I don't go, right, okay, that's that, ticked off the list. I know Bill Gates is trying to eliminate malaria and other things, but, you know, really? So it's still very controlled, that's, that's delivered with those values. So, yeah, your, your big problem is, um, you know, completely anarchic capitalism. I'm not saying we should all be communists, but I'm also saying we shouldn't be afraid of the concept of socialism. You know, what good is wealth if you don't make a vast amount of people's lives easier. You know, how comfortable do you need to be? How wealthy do you need to be? Do you need to own your own island? Because that is kind of saying to the rest of the world, if anything goes wrong, you can all fuck off. And you're, you know, if you're watching, if you're spending a large amount of your time watching YouTube, the chances of you being that kind of wealthy are almost nil. But also the chances of you becoming that wealthy is also almost nil. You'll be lucky, for the most part, if you survive into old age and don't have a crummy old age. I'm going to still be doing this. You know, I'm going to, you know, basically do my thing. But, you know, there is, there is no big conspiracy theory because those wealthy people are competing against each other. They'll come together to put pressure on governments to ease up on tax so they can become even more wealthy. Um, for instance, I mean, there was a really good article about um, corporate aid, like the people least likely and least in need of giant chunks and injections of cash. And I think, like, 2015... The corporate aid budget of the United States government was $100 billion, which is a lot of money. But let's put that with the national education budget was only $87 billion. So you make of that what you will. You know, wealthy people are your enemy. And it is wealthy people that influence governments and influence religious leaders to pretty much say, you better divide those 99% of people up. You better do that because if they all get together and they all get past their silly differences of religion or they get past their silly differences of history or they get past their silly you know, desire to you know, oppress another group of people because of the colour of their skin or the fact that they've got uh, you know, different dangly bits. If they're female, we must oppress them. If they've got a different colour of skin or they've got a different religion or they're transgender or they've got any obvious difference that we can point at. You know, They'll keep us divided, which is, you know, why I'm so hot on a, a more egalitarian um, form of survival, survival channel, a channel where we hopefully educate people in a few bits and bobs. Or, you know, it might be only a tiny thing that gets picked out from this. It's a smorgasbord, it's just like patrolling, just like rant media. It's a smorgasbord. Take what you want, leave the rest. But please, Hank, the one thing I would say, if you're going to, you're going to learn something from this, from anything that we do. Know that these silly divisions, that we, the, the differences that we really mark out, are, are wrong for two reasons. One, it means that we can never unite. If you keep, if you know, for every, for just for every one person that spouts off a load of rhetoric about how other people are wrong or different or bad because of that difference, you know, we we lose a chunk. We don't get to unite, and uh, we don't get to be a, a, a species together fixing the world's problems. And two, and it's a, it's a purely hypothetical thing because it's probably never, ever going to happen. If you look on, you know, the biggest picture you can have is if aliens land, like there is a species out there that's managed interstellar travel and they land and they look at us and go, but you, you hate people for no good reason. You hate other humans when your planet in amongst the stars and compared to a lot of other, even exoplanets, even Earth-like exoplanets aren't as lush and full of resources like we have here. And we're going to be embarrassed. We're going to look like it. So, yeah. There is no conspiracy. It is just wealthy people fucking with us and telling us there is, so we don't really pay attention to the big deal in that we are all being pushed down and we are living lives that aren't as good as they could be or aren't as full of opportunity as they could be purely because we would necessarily take away some of their wealth. And that's it. Thanks for watching.